Hey y'all. In this video, I'm going to show you how I do a spray painted um, plaid tumbler. This is just the way I do it. Um, I'm sure there's plenty of other ways to do it, uh, but a bunch of you asked me how I did mine, so this is the process that I took. I'm not saying it's the right way or the wrong way, just this is how I do it. Okay, so first thing um, I did was I spray painted it gray, which is going to be my mix color. Um, so if you watch my other video, I'm going to tape it up the exact same way um, I did in that video for the glitter. Uh, it's just that I've, I've base painted it basically um, with the mix color. So I'm going to do a black, white, and gray. So I'm just going to tape it up, and this time I'm using one inch um, painter's tape. I will later on use a little bit of, um, I think it's a half inch electrical tape um, for the really tedious process of the last of doing the last color, but we'll we'll get to that in a second. I did speed up a bit of the video. I left this part um regular just to kind of make sure you get those first few stripes on um perfectly so what i'm doing is i'm smoothing it and then i try to smooth the little wrinkle in the tape when when it goes around the the bottom i smooth it towards the bottom um because I will eventually tape off and spray paint the bottom just a solid color, so I don't really care what it looks like right now. And one thing I did learn um, from my first time doing um, the spray paint was to not leave those edges so long because I was trying to remove it while it was still wet, and I was having a hard time because it was on my football. Um, and those long pieces of tape were up inside and stuck to my football. So just make them um, just a little shorter um, and fold them over so that they're easy to kind of pull off. So right here, um, this is why I left it um, in regular speed because I wanted to show you how I split this into um, two more stripes here. So I'm going to kind of guess where I want that to go. And then I have a small piece of tape to the side that I'm just gonna use and put right over the top there so I can see what a, a third stripe would look like. Just to make sure that I'm kind of, you know, got my um, spacing pretty good. Um, it, it's not gonna be perfect, but I mean, if you wanted to take the time and measure it out and make it perfect, then, then um, go for it. But I, I find this way is pretty good.
Okay, so now I'm just going to go through and do the horizontal stripes. And um, again, this is exactly how I did it in the, um, the glitter tutorial that I did. Um, I always do the vertical stripes first and then do the horizontal stripes. I think it's the easiest way to do it. Um, again, that's just how I like to do it. So if you have a different process, then go for it. And just like before, I'm going to use just one piece of tape as my spacer. Um, so you'll see I'll put down three, and then I'm going to pull that second one and then put it below my third one. Too. So that way I'm not wasting a whole bunch of tape. Um, I already kind of waste a lot of tape in this particular on this particular tumbler anyways because of how tedious it is for the third color. Um, so I try to save as much as I can by by using that um, just one spacer all the way down. I just want to explain a little bit more about the, the color I chose. So um, I'm doing a black, white, and gray tumbler, um, plaid tumbler. So the gray is the mix between the white and the black. So that's why I've done that color first. Um, so if you wanted to do the red and black buffalo check, you would choose a, like a dark maroon um, or kind of a crimson color, like a, um, a darker red color. Um, and you would spray your cup that color first and then do all the taping and then um, do your black and your red after the taping. So whatever color is going to be your mix is what you want to spray first. Okay, so after I get this last um, piece pulled off and everything smushed down, what I'm going to do is take a silicone stir stick and just press the seams really well just to try to help um, avoid any sp spray paint getting up underneath the tape. Um, really, what I think I'll do in the future um, is probably put a thin layer of epoxy over each layer of spray paint. It's gonna take longer to do it that way, but if any does happen to get up underneath the tape, you can easily just kind of take a um, an X-Acto knife and scrape that off. Uh, so it'll be a lot easier to clean up and you'll, you'll for sure not peel any of your paint with your tape. And so I think in the future I will do um, a layer of epoxy over over the spray paint just to, to make it cleaner. Okay, so back to this cup. Um, what I did after I um, pressed all of the seams down is I went outside and I spray painted it black. And that's what you see here. Um, I removed the tape outside immediately after I spray paint, um, just being really careful uh, to not touch it anywhere. Um, you can wait until it's dry if you like. Um, I haven't had any problems just going ahead and peeling it right away until this cup, <laughs> um, which you'll see at the end. But um, so yeah, I use Rust-Oleum 2X coverage. Um, and I haven't had any problems just peeling right away. Um, so what I'm doing now is I'm taking that half inch um, electrical tape. And I'm just taping down one edge of the black. Because you have to have um, the other squares. You have to have them exposed so you can see where they are. If I just covered up that whole thing... I would have no idea where my black squares were.
So I'm just kind of showing you how I do it. Um, and you can see I have a, a bunch of little pieces of tape over there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up that tape right with that flat edge of the black. And um, of the spray painted black square, I should say. And I'm going to cover in between those two. It's kind of hard to explain what I do, but... So I left the tape a little longer so that I can line it up with that second um, square. So I can make sure that I am I put it on straight. Uh, but you, you don't want to leave it going past that square, though, because then um, you don't know where the edge is when you come to put your second piece of tape on, which will make more sense in a second. <laughs> And if it doesn't line up perfectly, like if you didn't cut your tape at a perfect 90 degree angle, which I most certainly did not, um, it's not going to matter because um, in the end, I'm going to come back through and put an entire piece of the blue painter's tape all the way around. So if it doesn't match up perfectly, it's still going to be fine. We'll cover it up in the uh, in the end. but you just want it to go on as straight as possible. And um, that way, whenever we spray paint the white, the boxes will line up and not like be awkward and weird. Okay, so now that I have that piece done, I'm actually going to cover up the rest of the black square. So this is why I left that little piece there. So now I can see how far over I need to tape to completely block off, block off that column there. I think this would probably be a little bit easier to do if I had had um, some like half inch painter's tape because um, I did notice that my my uh, electrical tape kind of uh, warped a little bit from the stretching. Okay, so this part I sped up. It's going to be basically the same. Um, I'm just going through and taping off all the left sides of these columns. So this is the part that I was saying is very tedious. It's It takes a while to do this part, but the more you prep and the more time you take on this part in particular, the better your cup is going to come out in the end. Because um, if you don't take the time to properly line everything up, you're going to come out with wonky squares. So I don't tape every single row um, or every single column like this. I only do every other one. There's six sections, six columns on this cup. Um, and I do every other one so that I have a guideline uh, for taping all the way around in the end. Um, I hope that makes sense. But I didn't want to spend the time to do every single one. Um, so I figured as long as I could just match up every other column, um, my lines would look pretty good in the end. And and they did. They were very close. Um, if my paint hadn't messed up, um, it would have been perfect. I had forgotten to do the bottom on each of these. 
and painter's tape did not work well for that. So I pulled out some electrical tape just to run along the bottom um, because it was impossible to, to get that painter's tape to stick on such a small section. All right, so now I'm just gonna go through and do all the right sides of each column. This way everything is taped up, and yet I still have really nice lines, and I can use those blue painter's tape sections um, to make my horizontal stripes later. Okay, so see, I'm just gonna match it up and then run it through. And by having every other one done, I can easily make a nice straight line uh, that should match up really well um, with my other ones. It's all about the prep work in this cup. The actual spray painting and stuff doesn't take any time at all, but um, the prep on this one is just a bit, a bit tedious. All right, so once I get this all taped up, um, again, I'm going to take my little um, silicone spatula stir stick thing um, and press down all the edges that I can just to help with any paint bleed. And then I'm going to go spray paint it white. And I will actually come back for this one and show you the reveal. Um, I ran out of my normal white paint and just used something else that I had on hand and it didn't work. <laughs> um, it was actually a primer and I don't know if that made a difference, but um, it was almost like rubbery whenever I pulled it off. Um, so as I was pulling the tape, it made the edges kind of ruffly. Um, so maybe this one really needed to be pulled once it was fully dry. Um, but I will know not to use that one again <laughs> and uh, to not be impatient. So I'm just pulling off the tape. Um, I remove all of the horizontal stripes first. And I find that the easiest. Uh, well, obviously, because it's <laughs> the ones we put on last. Um, and then I pull both pieces of each column down at the same time, um, and then it pulls off the little blue painter's tape pieces that are in between. Um, just be careful not to touch anything. Um, like I said, if you want to wait until it's fully dry, it's probably for the best. I'm just really impatient. So, um, all right, so that's pretty much it. Um, here comes the final tumbler. And as you can see, my lines are a little wonky because of the paint. But um, anyways, that's how I do a spray painted plaid tumbler. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching.